What's up y'all, Mike Build. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over and testing a cheap budget lithium iron phosphate battery. This particular one is made by a company called Seacon. This battery costs $230, which makes it very low on the budget scale as far as 12 volt batteries go. This is even cheaper than most lead acid batteries, which is crazy. These things are getting ridiculously cheap. And today we're gonna to see how good this thing is. Now Seacon says this thing uses grade A EVE cells. They also rate this thing to 5,000 charge and discharge cycles. You can parallel up to four of these you can also series up to four of these it has a 100 amp bms it can do 150 amps for three seconds it also has low temperature cutoff which is crazy for a battery this cheap normally you don't ever get that in a battery this cheap the case is abs plastic weighs about 20 pounds i really like the color too and i really dig the green and white color scheme i haven't seen this company before so it's kind of cool to see you know these new companies coming out with better batteries for less money we're going to find out if we're getting our money's worth or not and we're going to see how good this thing is so we're going to perform the capacity test then we're going to do a 100 amp discharge test then we're going to do 150 amp discharge test for three seconds and then we're going to take the battery apart we're going to have a look inside i'm going to show you guys a lot of up close stuff inside the battery so we can actually see how good the build quality is we're going to see what kind of cells they use we're going to see what kind of bms it uses and then we're going to give our final thoughts and kind of go from there and my plan for this battery is i'm going to put it in service with the rest of my 12 volt batteries if you guys watched one of my other videos a few months back we reviewed another cheap battery and i've been using that one every day so this one's going to go in parallel with that battery and we're actually going to cycle this thing i'm not just going to test it for a video and throw it on a shelf somewhere i'm actually going to get some real world use out of this battery i want to build a bunch of stuff with this battery and we're really going to do some long-term testing and go over the build quality and you guys can let me know what you think in the comments if you guys want to get one of these for yourself there is going to be a link in the description to seacon's website and if you use a discount code provided you will get three percent off so that was nice of them to provide that there also is an amazon link if you want to go check it out there as well both of those will be in the description there's not very many batteries available for this price point so i really hope this thing's a winner because if it really is good for that price then it's a no-brainer in my opinion so let's get into it all right before we do any sort of testing we do need to charge the battery so i'm going to use this 10 amp charger this is going to charge it to 14.6 volts at which point the charger will shut off and then we can begin our capacity test we're going to test it at 0.2 c and see the capacity we get and go from there all right guys i'm going to let this fully charge once we get a green light here then we know it's done so this is going to take a few hours we're just going to let it be all right here's a close-up of the battery for anyone who's curious here's some more spec there's how you say the brand name it's seacon also included in a box, you do get two sets of M8 bolts. You get some little safety caps, and then you also get the user manual. So we can kind of skim through this real quick. So there are some of the specs from the manual. For those who are interested, sorry, there's a little bit of glare. Some more specs. They also claim you will get 5,000 charge and discharge cycles, so that's pretty good to hear. A lot of the current ones on the markets only claim between three and 4,000, so they say 5,000. And that might be because they're using the grade A cells. As the cell technology is getting better and better, these things are going to start having more and more cycle count, so that's good to see on a low-cost battery as well. Alrighty, guys, here's gonna be the setup to capacity test this Seacon battery. I have the battery fully charged. As you can see, we have a green LED. We're gonna be using this Harbor Freight Pure Sine Wave Inverter, 2,000 watt rated. And then I have a nice current shunt right here. This is actually gonna be powered off its own battery. As you can see over there, that way that's not gonna skew the results. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is connect a 0.2C load to the setup, which is gonna be about 20 amps on the DC side. And we're gonna literally let it run until the battery shuts off the inverter. And then we're gonna be able to see our results on the little screen right here. I've already preset it to 100, but it'll still count up if it goes over that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the test set up. We're gonna get it started. I'm gonna hook the loads up. Okay, we got everything zeroed out on the current shunt. We're gonna turn the inverter on. All right, here we go. Got about a 0.2C load on the battery now. We have one charger charging up my 12 volt power bank right here. And I have this other charger charging up my big 48 volt battery. So those both together equal almost 300 watts, 270 watts. So we're gonna let this run, like I said, until the battery completely shuts everything off, the BMS shuts off, and we're gonna see what the results are. So this will probably take about five hours. All right, guys, the discharge test just finished. Show you all the results real quick. The inverter just tripped low voltage. So we got 104 amp hours out of the battery. So that's awesome to see. Everything did great. The voltage stayed nice and stable till the end and then it dropped off. The voltage curve on this thing was real nice and steady. And then, you know, toward the end, it did start to fall because that's just what lithium iron phosphate batteries do. But yes, 104 amp hours, definitely above what they rate it for. So that's awesome to see. So now we're going to fully recharge the battery again. And then we're going to do 100 amp and 150 amp discharge just to see if the battery can handle it. But so far, so good. This thing tested above what it's rated for. And I'm very happy to see that. All right, guys, we have the inverter hooked up again, just like we did in the capacity test. We're gonna hook a big battery charger up to this, and that's going to allow me to control exactly how much current and wattage we're pulling. This is the setup we're gonna be using for our load. It's a big 3000 watt Sun Gold power inverter charger. So right now I'm discharging this battery pack down enough 
to where when I plug this into the inverter and then all I got to do is turn this knob right here and it's going to turn the charger power all the way up as high as I want. So that should allow us to put 100 and 150 amps worth of load on this. Then we're going to be able to see how the Seacon does, if it cuts out, if it gets hot, if it does anything weird, we we'll be able to see the voltage and all that stuff. So as soon as that discharges a little bit, I'm going to go and hook everything up and then we're going to turn it on and we're going to start the test. And inverter is on. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. All right, battery charger is connected. Let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, we have 23, 36 amps. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up some more. 37, 38 amps, 39 amps, 40. I'm going to go ahead and creep it up some more. We're at 40 amps. As you can see, it's taking it like a champ. Let's go up a little more. That's 50 amps on the dot. Let's go ahead and go up more. I don't know how high this is going to go. 133 amps. It's rated at 100 amps and it'll do 150 for three seconds. So far it's holding 133 pretty strong. And we are getting some voltage sag, but I guarantee you that's from the actual losses in the wires. I'm actually gonna check it with a meter and we're gonna verify that. All right, the Harbor Freight inverters fan just kicked on. Let's check the voltage. All right, so it says 11.4, we're actually getting 12 at the actual battery terminals. I wouldn't worry about that voltage sag too much. This is overloading the battery technically. It's only rated for 100 amps, pushing 133, no problem. Nothing's getting hot. All right, so unfortunately that's the highest I can go with this battery charger. So we're gonna plug another battery charger and see if we can get 150 amps out of it. Alrighty guys, the next battery charger we're going to use is this EG4 charge verter. And this can pull up to 5,000 watts. So we will easily be able to hit 150 amps with this. And I'm gonna have this connected to my big 48 volt battery that's running on my mini splits right now. So it'll be the perfect load, really stress test this battery. There we go, charge verter's plugged in. Let me get you guys zoomed in, okay. Also guys, please forgive my poor lighting. I am working on building a studio, so my future videos will be better. So thank y'all for y'all's patience. All right, here we go. Oh, there it goes. All right, the charge verter is pulling 85 amp. Let's see if we can get it a little higher. All right, I'm setting the charge current on the charge verter from 16 amps. Let's go to 20. All right, that's 20 amps on the charge verter. There we go, it's loading up. The inverter, by the way, if I haven't already said, is rated for 2000 watts. All right, that's 102, 105 amps. 113 amps. All right, we're at 113 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the amperage up a little bit more. Go to 25 amps. All right, 25 amps. All right, coming up on power. So far, so good. 83 amps, 86. I really wanna get this to 150. I'm not gonna go much more over 150 because I don't wanna damage anything. I still wanna be able to use this battery when I'm done testing. All right, now we're at 134 amps, 1500 watt load. Let's go a little higher. We're at 36 amps on the charge verter. Oh yeah, it's getting loaded down. I don't know when the inverter's low voltage is gonna kick in. It may be any minute. Oh, okay, low voltage just kicked on. There you go, it just tripped. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up the discharge test. I was not able to get the full 150 amps out of it, but that's on me. I do believe my setup needs a little bit of an upgrade. I'm only running four gauge cables, with, and they're not the best cables in the world. So we were just getting too much voltage drop at the inverter in order to push it any farther. I think if I put this thing on the charger and took it right off the charger and did the same test, we could probably get 150 out of it, but I don't wanna push it any harder than I have to. It did well over 100 and it never cut off. I do wonder though, and I saw another video about this, I wonder what amperage the BMS will cut off at. So just keep that in mind, make sure you guys use a fuse and I would not push this battery over 100 amp because that's what they rated at if you wanna get the best life out of it. If you're running 130, 140, 150 amps, you should definitely double up on your batteries and I don't think you'd ever have an issue. As you saw, it ran great. It never cut out. We didn't have any issues other than the inverter cutting out. Like I said, that's more on my setup. This is not the best setup to be full load testing batteries anyways. It's kind of janky, but I do plan on upgrading all this in the future. So as we get better at testing batteries, I'm gonna hopefully get nicer and nicer equipment. This inverter right here is also very nice. This is probably a lot better quality than the Harbor Freight inverter. And I think if I put two gauge cables going from this through the shunt to the battery, we can actually push the batteries a lot harder. But I am happy to see that the Seacon did do it without a problem. It didn't break a sweat. Nothing got too warm. It did get a little bit warm up here, but nothing crazy. The terminals stayed nice and cool. Nothing got too hot. All right, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and open this thing up and we're going to see what's inside of it. Take a look at the cells, the build quality, the BMS, and we're going to get real up and close with all the components in this battery so we can see exactly how it's built. I'm also going to get a QR code tester so we can see if there's QR codes on the batteries and confirm that they're Eve cell and we'll be able to see all the information hopefully on those as well. All right, guys. So we did all our testing on the battery. Now it's time to crack it open and have a look on the inside. Really excited to see what we find. So the way you open these batteries up is it's just glued all on the lid so I just very gently pried because I don't want to damage the battery I do actually want to use this and let's see what's inside I'll get you guys in a little closer all right so first thing I noticed real thick conductor this looks like maybe four gauge and then the negative side has two seven gauge it says conductors it's a real good look at the BMS this appears to be a QR code right there very interesting here's a 
temperature sensor right here. So not much more to not much to see from the top. You can see they put these foam blocks on the sides as well as the front and back to keep the battery safe from vibration. Nothing feels loose. The wiring looks good. These connections look really solid. Nicely heat shrinked. That's what we want to see. All right, I'm going to pull the battery out of the box itself. The inside, don't know what that is. All right, there's the empty shell. Obviously, if you guys are going to do this at home, be really, really careful. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't take your batteries apart. Trying to get a better look at the cells. All right, so here's a close up of some of the cells. Sorry, I don't mean to cast a shadow at my camera. Let me try that. So you can see they're all laser welded together and it looks nice. And there's our main positive, main negative going to the BMS. Balance wires all look good. It's all nicely loomed right here. So there's the QR code. I'm trying to get a better shot at this QR code for you guys. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can read that. The cells themselves look like really good quality. There's no bulging. There's material between all the cells. And then there's this reinforced tape holding the cells together. Like I said before, laser welded tabs. That's good to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the BMS from the top. We can get a look at underneath the BMS. And then we're going to try to get a better look at these QR codes. I'm going to download an app that's going to let me scan these. And we're going to see more information about the cells. Alrighty, guys. So I was able to use a QR code scanner on these cells. And we were able to actually verify that these are legit EVE cells. You can see here 100 amp hour and the manufacturing date on these cells is the 4th of July of 2023. So they're about a year old, but that was when they were actually manufactured. So they were obviously built, shipped, then they were given to these guys for them to build. So that's not really a big deal. As long as the cells aren't like really, really old, I don't think it really matters. You guys are curious about the information on there. All right, guys, so I checked all four of the cells and they all are matching as far as the date code and all that stuff. So I'm very confident that these are legit cells. So that's really good to see a company using good name brand cells in their batteries because sometimes you really don't know what you're getting. So these are legit EV cells. Very good to see that EV makes a ton of battery cells and they're known to be very reliable. Very happy to see that. Now we're gonna check the voltage of each cell to see how closely they are after doing our big discharge test and putting a ton of load on them. Let's see how well the cells are actually matched because if you have a cell that's not matched well to another cell, you're gonna see a deviation. So let me go get my meter. We're gonna put it on volts. So good you guys can see that. 3.335, 3.335, 3.335, and 3.335. These are all within a hundredth of a volt of each other. In fact, they're all exactly the same. This is a fluke meter. It's very accurate. So very happy to see that. Man, that's impressive. For this price point, you're getting a really good, really, really good cell. So I'm happy to see that. Now let's take a look better look at this BMS. All right, now we're going to take a look at the BMS, and then we're also going to test the low temperature cutoff. So we're going to put the temperature sensor in ice and see if the BMS shuts off. There is the make and model of the BMS for anyone who is interested. I'm not really sure what that is i tried to type this into google and i didn't really have much success all right here's a close-up of the bms this is in fact a jbd bms based on the symbol there i was able to find that on google so there's like the model and all that stuff so you can see if you look at that symbol there that's the jbd bms logo i'll kind of go over the bms real slow so y'all can see that all right, now I'm gonna get some ice water. We're gonna we're going to put the temperature sensor in ice and then we're gonna make sure the BMS cuts off to make sure the low temperature protection actually works. All right, guys, so as you can see with the charger connected and the temperature sensor in ice, we have a green light. And what that means is the BMS has disconnected and is not allowing us to charge the battery. So that shows you that the low temp charging protection is in fact working. Really good to see that it worked. A lot of lower cost batteries normally don't have that, but it's very important on lithium iron phosphate batteries to have low temperature cutoff, especially if you live in a colder climate because you will damage the battery if you use it below zero degrees. It's an excellent feature to see and i'm glad it actually works but yeah guys that's really it there's really not much more to show so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing slapped back together and i'll give you guys my final thoughts on the battery all right guys well that's probably gonna do it overall i think this thing's really great for the money it did everything advertised the one thing i will say and i did notice this on another video is the overcurrent protection doesn't seem to want to kick on i don't really think it's a huge deal you're supposed to be using fuses and all that stuff anyways but just something to keep in mind the battery did very well it went over its rated capacity as far as amp hours we got 104 amp hours out of it and i was able to pull well over 100 amps continuous and the battery just just kept chugging along so super happy about that y'all saw it had eve cells in it as a jbd bms the build quality is solid on this battery and i think you're really getting a good bang for your buck so we're going to keep testing this thing i'm going to put it in service with the rest of my 12 volt system and we're just going to run it every day and if i have any issues from here on out I'll definitely let you guys know and maybe in another year we'll do another capacity test to see how it's holding up over time so i think this is a solid contender in the budget battery market and i think if you got one you'd have years and years of trouble free service that's going to do it for the video you guys thank y'all so much for tuning in and watching let me know what you guys think of the seacon and I'll see you on the next one.